Today, we're gonna to be looking at the new Photoshop 2020 update on the iPad. Hey guys, it's Connie here from Quick Edits. Uh, I haven't uploaded in a very long time, but I thought I'd make this video as uh, Adobe have just, well, recently launched their Photoshop 2020 update uh, on the iPad, the new app. And so I thought I'd give it a go uh, alongside with you guys the first time I'm opening it and trying to make something, just, just something simple for now, just to see what it's like. And I thought I'd give you my uh, initial thoughts on it, and uh, let's uh, let's just jump in and have a have a quick look. Now I've had the app installed on the iPad for just a couple of days, but uh, I haven't really given it a really good go yet. Um, I haven't made anything significant, so uh, we're just going to make something simple and see what the big fuss is about. Really, it's been causing quite a bit of drama on online. Uh, some people like it, some people don't. Apparently, there's a couple of issues with it at the moment, but you know, it's a new app. It's in version one, I suppose. So uh, we'll just give it a go and see whether we can make something, see whether we like it and whether I'll be using it. Uh, okay, let's just jump in then. Uh, okay. Okay, so this is the little practice one that I started a couple of days ago, but um, didn't really do anything there. So let's just make a new one for now. Uh, I actually want to be making uh, a new project from an image. So it says if you start with your image, so I'm going to import and open from my camera roll. Let's just grab this. Okay, so I just want to test out a couple of things. Uh, see what effects are already on you and whether they can actually be used or not. And now, the big thing so far on the iPad that I've heard is this little circular thing down here. Apparently this is technically a shift button, I suppose, if you're working on a computer, but um, apparently it's got a quite a few different functions on there if you're using different uh, tools. So here's your toolbar on the left side here. Uh, as you can see, guys, it does actually look like Photoshop on an iPad, which is really, really cool to see. So I'm already quite familiar with all the icons, I'd say. So uh, Let's just try doing something quick here. And the first thing I want to do is probably change the hair color. Let's try and do that for now. So I want to uh, duplicate the layer. So I'm using this layer option here. Now this, I think this is the, what's it called? It's just the quick layer one there. But you can open it up and get the full layers there. But for now, let's give this one a go. So right now I'm highlighted on it. I guess I'm going to press these three here to try and duplicate. There he is, duplicate layer. Okay, so I want to hide this one. I'm going to press the I there. There we go, so I can't see that. And we'll work on this one now. We we'll probably want to get a hue and saturation adjustment. So let's have a look. Um, just see if we can find it. Oh, no. It's two fingers to undo that. That's the mask. We don't need that. Uh, oh, here we go. Go to effects. Okay, so I've seen this in the first time I opened the app. Now, it's saying that this feature isn't supported on the device yet. But I don't know whether that's because I'm using the old version of the 13-inch uh, iPad or whether it's just because it's a new app. I don't know whether you can actually use it on the new iPad, but for now, we aren't able to use that or that. Uh, we got a dimension, so it's just smart filters and the effects that we can't use. So right now, I'm just trying to look for hue and saturation, which I'm struggling to find. It's got to be here somewhere. Okay, so I'm not going to lie, guys, it took me around two to three minutes to actually find it. I don't know whether I was just blind before. So it's under this this button here, which is your layer properties, and under uh, clipped adjustment layer, and you get all these adjustment layers here, and there's our hue and saturation. And now I find it. It's uh, quite familiar to what I've used before. So let's just go for a wacky color here. Let's go, uh, let's go blue, I think. There we go. Now I want to be able to add a mask to this layer, so I'm just going to come out of there and with my layers, I'm just going to add a mask. No, uh, undo that. Okay, I think I need to be on this layer and then add a mask. Uh, okay, so that's giving me a white mask. So let me just see if I can find a, uh, if I can invert the mask. Uh, I'm just trying to do it by holding shift or with this, uh, this holding button icon here. That's not working either. Okay, it's not an issue. Let's uh, let's just skip that part. We'll use the uh, paint bucket tool with a black black fill, and we just drop on that. Okay, so now we have lost this. We've got a, an inverted mask technically. So we're gonna go back onto this layer, and I'm gonna bring that one back. Go back to our coloured one, and this time I'm gonna get my brush here. Okay, so we can move this one around, which I like quite like. Um, so you can see I've got, you can see my sizes there. I'll do it for now and I'm gonna set my foreground to white 
and I guess I can just start painting back in the color. Okay, so this is quite familiar. Not massive drastic issue yet. So let me just finish this. Just gonna do this really quickly. We'll go back around then with the uh, uh, black brush to erase it. So just wanna get the hair. There we go. And I'm just gonna uh, invert and bring this one back to black. Zoom in a little. I'll just have a little clean up. Okay. Oops. Double tap for a um or a two finger tap for a undo there. Okay, so that's worked quite well. Oh I can see a little bit of blue there, so let's just fix that one up. Okay, so far so good. It's not really uh that much different to a desktop version. Uh I got my mask, I got my hue and saturation, and it's uh it's looking pretty good, so I quite like that. Uh now I want to try maybe uh I don't know, cutting out uh, from the white background. So let's just try and give that a go. Okay, so I think first I want to try and merge the layers, and merge these two layers here. Um, I think if I could maybe hold shift. Oh, there we go. So if you hold uh, the little holding icon, you can select them both. And okay, so merge layers isn't available there. But I have a merge visible, so let's just do that. Okay, so that's done that anyway. So we got one whole layer, which is pretty much what I wanted anyway. So let's try and cut her out now. So probably the easiest way I would have said for now is just with a pen tool, which is got to be here somewhere. Okay, so I can't find the pen tool, which is pretty strange. You would have thought. Photoshop would definitely come with a pen tool. So, okay, let's just let's try um, quick selection for now. Okay, so this one works. Let's just see how, how good the selection is just by doing this. Oh, okay, we'll try and fix that. I'm not expecting it to be perfect around the hair, but we'll try zooming in here. Okay, so it's definitely not as accurate as the desktop version, but it does seem to be doing the job for now. Okay, that's fine. So now I'm going to erase this, but I'm going to hold this part, and hopefully that'll be... Yeah, this is the subtract, it says up in the corner there. So I can subtract. Oops. Bring back this. Okay, it's a little bit more com uh, difficult than uh, on the desktop, but let's see what that's doing. Now, I would like to refine my edge, but I'm guessing, it seems that this app doesn't even have a pen tool. I don't think it's going to have a refine edge tool, is it? So, uh, for now, let's just mask that to see how our cutout is. We can zoom in here. It's not, it's not too bad, especially around here, around the head. It's not too bad. It's quite sharp, uh, but as you get to the hair... Uh, things aren't looking as good, but you know, it's expected. It's not the full desktop version, but let's see if we can try and fix some of this. Let's see what other options we got here. Okay, so I can't really see anything that stands out to it, so I can use my uh, uh, use a, some sort of refine the edge tool. But okay, for now, let's just use a uh, black brush. Let's change my brush settings. Was, okay, so this is on the softest possible, and let's just change the size of that. Oh, I want to deselect so I can do that with the bottom part here. There we go. And let's just go in here just to quickly get rid of some of the white between the hair. Now, I'm guessing Adobe, you know, they're going to be adding a lot more features to the app in the future. So I'm looking forward to that and see what they do add. Uh, right now, I can pretty much say it's far from being a full Photoshop app at the moment but it's not too bad let's just get that okay so i've got a cut out it's not amazing but it's not too bad at all especially for an ipad so let's try and uh, add a background now so we're going to add maybe a new layer which is this one here i believe now can i just drag this underneath yes let's try adding a gradient so you gradient usually yep yeah, there it is usually underneath there and i can't see anything to change the gradient colors yet Okay, so now you can definitely see that some of this is really bad for cutting out. But for now, 
we're good. Um, so I'm guessing it's these colors here to change our gradient. So let's uh, just pick a different gradient for now. It's not going to be amazing. We'll have blue, and then for our background color, we'll go green. There we go. And I'm guessing we can just make a new gradient. Yeah, that seems to be working. Okay, so we've made new layers. We've got a some sort of atrocious cutout, but it's, it's okay for now. And we've managed to use the hue and saturation adjustment layer as well. So let's try playing around with the text tool, which is right here. And let's see what this can do. Just tap there. Okay, so it's giving me the choice to type something in. So let's put in a uh, hey, changing tutorial. Okay, so I can't see it. Maybe I'll put the layer underneath. Uh, okay, let's raise this one above. Oh, I see the issue. The um, the text is the same color as the background. Okay, so there's the color there. So let's just turn that black. We can move it around. Okay, this is annoying coming up there. Um, so Apple hasn't really released a uh, add-in new font uh, library uh, to the iPad yet, so we just stuck with the original fonts, I believe. So there's not much we can do there, which is a shame. Uh, let's change this to black, and we'll change the font size. I want to be able to add in a new line there. Okay. Change color to black. Oh, you actually need to highlight everything to change the color. Okay, I quite like that. There we go. And I want to align to center. This is really annoying why that keeps coming up. Okay, let's have a look and see what effects we can do to our text. Um, well, pretty much the same as before to the adjustment layers. Um, you can't, I can't actually see anything for any layer styles at all. So, um, like usually I'd put in maybe a drop shadow um, or maybe a stroke. So I can't see anything for me to be able to do that. So maybe we can cheat it for now. So I'm going to make this back to white. Sorry guys, and I'll keep changing my mind. And uh, we go, oh. I'm going to go back to my layers. So oh, press done. There we go. And I'm going to duplicate this layer, which is there. Put the one underneath. And with this one, I'm going to. I seen Gaussian blur somewhere. Uh, was it there? Yep, yeah, there it is. So I'm going to Gaussian blur this one. Okay, so I need to flatten the layer. Cool. And uh, okay, you can see how that blur is working. That's cool. Press done. And now I want to change the color. Um. Probably the easiest way to do that now is by using curves. Do we have curves here? No, we don't, but we do have levels. Okay, there we go, guys. Uh, so far, so good, I suppose. Uh, again, this is my first time actually giving it a good go in some of the tools as well. And it's not really there yet, but though we've done a pretty good job of trying to smash in as many tools and effects as possible for now, I, I hope my iPad isn't the reason why I can't use some of these uh know, where was it oh yeah so some of these options here like the effects i hope that's not because i'm using the older version of the ipad i don't think they would have done that but i will have to check uh maybe someone else's ipad who's got a new one on mine and see if theirs works but for now it's it's it's, it's okay it's half there i'd say it's not fully there just yet but They've done a good job. I, w I expect them to do a lot more uh, in the future, especially with the new updates uh, coming out. So I'll leave that there. Uh, I will be coming back to it soon. I'm definitely uh, putting a bit more practice in. I'm guessing there's some gestures. And I think there's uh, when you attach the keyboard to the iPad as well, you can actually get some keyboard shortcuts uh, working as well. And especially with this thing here, I want to play around with this, uh, this uh, icon. For now, here. this is my first go, uh, my initial reaction as well. I hope I didn't. Uh, rinse it too bad but there we go guys that's Photoshop on the iPad uh, 2020 so I'm guessing this is saved as well yeah so I think it goes straight to my uh, oh I'm not online right now because I've got an airplane mode but I'm guessing this, this gets uploaded straight to my cloud as well so I can open it up on my desktop and finish the job I suppose yeah not bad for thumbnails though Anyway, we leave that like that. Uh, really hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you let let me know, guys, if you want to see any more iPad Photoshop uh, tutorials. That's after I learn a little bit more, I suppose, first. Uh, but I'm happy to do a couple more videos as I get a bit more advanced. 
but thank you very much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment down below what you'd like to see next. And I'll uh, see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye.